Hey, this is Jason Moss of Georgia Manufacturing Alliance, and we're here with another edition of our Manufacturing Success in Georgia Quick Tour interview. And today I am really excited to hang out with one of my buddies here, Justin Hughes. He's a managing partner of Diesel Green. Now, although Justin was not listed in the book as a as a manufacturer, he's been actively engaged in our organization for quite some time. He's been a corporate sponsor, and he's one of the reasons this RV looks so good. You know, he, he and his team actually put together, helped do the layout and do the graphics on this RV. So really, again, we're appreciative of his support in, in GMA. And I thought it was a great opportunity to learn a little bit more um, about the supply chain, some of the challenges that we're facing in the market today, and uh, you know, without without supply chain, you know, manufacturers all they have is inventory. So we got to be able to make sure that we get the products from where we manufacture to the end, end user. And so uh, usually that's a lot of different touch touch points. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that, what supply chain is, kind of how it works, and uh, the impact of uh, maybe we'll talk a little bit about the COVID space as well. But without any further ado, what I want to do is I'll turn this over to my good friend, Mr. Justin Hughes. Justin, if you would, uh, for the folks that don't know you yet, tell us who you are and uh, what's your role here at the company. First of all, what's going on, brother? Man, uh, glad to be here. I want to say thanks for setting us up. Uh, you know, the first interview after the 4th of July. Uh, we really love our country here. And, uh, you know, my, my proud father of a son in the Marine Corps. And I got a lot of family members in the military. So. Very cool. Very um, cool. But as far as uh, Diesel Grid, uh, I'm the managing member. Um, started our company in uh, 2009, uh, and uh, it's been building it one relationship at a time. Yeah. And now, uh, what is Diesel Grid? What What do you guys do? What's your role in the space? Why Why is the manufacturer talking to you guys about uh, about what's going on? Yeah. So we're an asset based freight carrier. Okay. Uh, we move supply chain for customers from point A to point B. Okay. Uh, okay. So if you need product or have product to be shipped, that's where we take it. Okay. Good deal. So supply chain is a pretty big, big term. I mean, you people kind of kick that all around, you know, warehousing, transportation, trucking, but your role is to, uh, is the, is the carrier side, right? So asset based, uh, uh, carrier, that means that you guys own your own equipment. Is that right? right? Correct. Okay. Yep. Um, well, I, I tell you, <laughs> this is a, a crazy time in the year. I mean, it, yeah, I, I always hear from our manufacturers that, you know, when it comes watermelon season in Georgia, uh, carriers tend to be a little bit trickier to find. Can you tell us a little bit about what's, you know, uh, what are some of the impacts on supply chain? What, what, what's going on out there? Yeah, just, I mean, just like everything, you hear that story, we don't have it, or we can't get it, or, I mean, that's goes for everyone yeah and that's uh, just a repetitive thing that we're hearing I mean we are waiting on parts ourselves for our own equipment uh, you know to keep rolling so uh, everyone's dealing with it. okay so you say so missing parts missing parts to forget the equipment out trying to figure out if you got you know equipment down um, you know we were talking a little bit pre-show and I, I love love kind of finding out some some inside you know track on what's going on with with uh, these leaders around the state and one of the things that you shared with me is after COVID it seems like that a lot of companies are using that as a default response we don't have it we're out of it tell me a little bit about how that's impacting you guys yeah I mean you know like I said is it their default response I, don't, I can't answer that but it, it just feels like it I feel like that's what's in the air when you when you think of 2021 it's like sorry you can't get it or it's gonna cost three times as much right you know that and, and, you know, just the trailers alone that we purchase uh, to move the freight, uh, they've doubled in price. You know, home prices have jumped $100,000, it seems. Uh, so that, that's, that effect is in all aspects of everything that's going on right now. So, uh, you know, trying to find and source everything the way things used to be, it's hard. When you print $7 trillion, you know, uh, things kind of, inflation takes over real quick, like so. That is, I think we're seeing that. So what I know fuel for a little while fuel was going, you know, at a crazy rate of increase. How do you, as a business owner in the in the freight business, how do you how do you deal with it? How do you? Yeah, so for, you know, fuel's uh, an, an inconsistent cost of goods sold. Okay. And uh, so almost 100% of your companies are using a, a fuel surcharge. 
So they kind of, you have a base rate and then you add a fuel surcharge to compensate for hikes and or, uh, you know, a fall in price like we had uh, okay. during COVID, the prices kind of dropped, you know, because right. we had a surplus of oil. So, uh, so the freight bills would have been a little bit less. It's, it's, it's kind of a nominal fee, really just to uh, support that fluctuation. Okay. So that's kind of baked into the whole transportation side of the house for delivery. It is. Okay. It is. I mean, it's just something that we can't control, you know, and at the end of the day, we have to compensate for it because the success of me is the success of everyone else. Sure. And, you know, so we all look at it as a team effort. Supply chain as a whole, you know, raw materials to transportation, to manufacturer, to consumer. Um, I mean, if one of them fails, we all fail. So everybody in that link of the chain has to be efficient. And uh, as long as we're working together to do that, we all win at all points. Okay, so when, people, when the manufacturers are screaming, you know, where's my stuff? How can I get it moved? What what do we need to tell the manufacturers? What you know? I mean, I think I think we all need a, a little more uh, <clears throat> grace during these crazy times. What, what what would you share with manufacturers out there? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like I said, those same excuses everybody has are just passed around. You know shortage of staff, shortage of materials, and uh, it's really, you know, you want to have those relationships, so yeah. when when you get that one item, you give it to that person, you know, and I, at the end of the day, that's, that's kind of how it works, you know. I got you. I got you. Very cool. Very cool. Well, you know, we've, we've had a lot of different, uh, a lot of different challenges over the past couple of years you know we're all trying to figure out the best way to do things so um, we talked a little bit about so, some folks online are, are, are very knowledgeable understand asset-based lending they understand I mean, not asset-based lending I mean asset <laughs> um, uh, trucking companies that, that have equipment versus 3PLs that do the shipping I and mean, do the kind of third party tell us a little bit about that give us a little education in that area yeah, so that's a, a double-edged sword. You know, there's benefits to both. There's disadvantages to both. So you really just kind of want to have a relationship with both. Um, like I was referring to, when when you have the asset and you control the asset, and it's the only one available, you, that you're going to lean on that relationship to use that to your advantage of your supply chain link. Uh, you know, versus uh, a 3PL. But on the other side, 3PL has advantages to. So when that asset's maxed out. 3PL can outsource other assets uh, from other parties to uh, still accomplish your other goals. Yeah. Okay. Great. So you kind of need to have good relationships with carriers that have equipment and have trucks, right? So that's a, it's good to build those relationships early on when, when you can. But that doesn't yeah. always when you, when those carriers run out of trucks, man. I guess they're just kind of got out of trucks. So right. you got to have a, a backup. Yes, yeah, so you got to have both those relationships in place. You know. Okay. Perfect. Well, I know you mentioned um, you, you mentioned you've got a son in the Marines, and I know that you know, through following social media, a lot of folks out there may, may see some of the posts that you guys do. I know that you give back a lot to the community, and you really acknowledge the the, the veteran community. I, I'm a veteran myself, and yeah, I'm thankful for the time that I had to serve. But I think that there's, there's a lot of opportunities for veterans in the transportation arena what, what what would you recommend somebody that's thinking about getting involved in, in supply chain yeah so uh, exiting military uh, staff if uh, can actually obtain their CDL uh, okay. through the military and uh, and actually uh, we as a smaller company can even get an insurance waiver okay. from that um, so that's that's a nice benefit to having that military background as long as they were involved in um, and uh, I mean, really, we just, we love hiring ex-military. Um, you know, the uh, transportation industry is so chaotic, and uh, you know, bringing some type of order to the chaos. Uh, the military definitely instills that in people. Yeah. So uh, we we greatly appreciate that, and uh, just being honest, you know, um, I think there's a lot of good honest people there. We we always try to bring that honesty to our customers. I tell you, that's cool. I, I, that's one of the things that I've seen in the, the manufacturing side of the house. The military tends to do really good in this environment because they got, you know, 
focus, attention to detail, they're committed to the mission, you know, that that across the board is really interesting to see how well that fits in manufacturing and supply chain. And if you're if you're in the military, you are in supply chain. <laughs> you're yeah. touching it every day yeah. somehow or another, right? That's that's right, yeah. So um, one of the other pieces that I wanted to kind of chat with you about is is workforce. Part of the reason that we're doing this book tour right now is that, you know, there's Definitely challenges in filling roles in the manufacturing space. What are you seeing on the, um, you know, supply chain side? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely challenges ahead. Uh, you got to thank all the schools uh, for CDL to learn how to drive a truck. You have to be with somebody, right. and so for a year they that never happened. Oh, I never even thought of that. So uh, there's going to be a huge, uh, you know, just we're not going to have enough truck drivers. Yeah, you know, and uh, so one of the things I had asked my insurance company was kind of relieve some of those or pull some of those restraints. You know, maybe if uh, I don't know how they could, but the government could assist in in helping, uh, you know, allow more people to drive. I guess. Okay. Um, yeah, there's a huge need. I mean, do you, do you foresee? I mean, you know, break out that crystal ball. And tell us a little bit about. <laughs> Do you, do you foresee um, driverless trucks out on the road in, in, in our lifetimes? <laughs> in our lifetimes? That's a little trick. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I'm ready for it. I, I would I would love it. I We don't own any uh, over-the-road um, trucks. Right. All okay. of our stuff is local. Right. Um, being a truck driver is hard. You know, I, I started out uh, unloading trailers, loading trailers driving tractor trailers and, and it's just it's hard on the family um and uh, working nights for you know 15 20 years done that yeah and uh i think at the end of the day uh those jobs that just take you away from your family for a week at a time over the road th those are hard to come by and you gotta have a special person that just likes to be alone and then I don't like to be alone, so I've never wanted to. So we we don't even actually own any um, super trucks. Okay. So when those driverless trucks come available, that's when we will offer our services across okay. country. Okay, I got you. I got you. Well, I tell you, driving down here, you know, so we're up in Marville. It's about an hour and 20, 30 minutes ish. You know, I, I'm I'm racing Google when it tells me what time <laughs> I'm supposed to arrive. I use that as a you know that's a mission. That's a goal. Can I beat that legally? You know, I do right. drive. Do drive. The speed limit at all times, yeah. but um, but I see that is uh, you know the trucks are everywhere, man. And and now now this is not a big rig; it's a you know it's a 32 foot class A um, vehicle, but it takes up all of the road. I mean, like oh, yeah. it fills up the lanes, and the focus that you have to have, like constantly. I tell you, I have a whole new appreciation for folks who drive big rigs every day. Because when you when you're kind of put in that sort of in that position in that area, it does make you think about how how taxing that is on a driver to be able to push something this bad. This is a it, just, it blows me away that I'm able to drive this thing with just regular driving license. <laughs> I, just, I can't believe when I bought it there like yeah, yeah, just take it away. You don't yeah. need a license or anything. And I was like, Are you sure? Yeah. Um, but, but it's interesting to see that, but it, it, it has given me tons more, uh, again, appreciation for folks that drive every day. And now, now you got involved in GMA during COVID, just like right as COVID was rolling up on us. Um, and I love, I love your, your, your mindset that you're going to figure out ways that we can make this better for everybody. That's one of the things that really attracted GMA to, to, to your leadership team is the, the commitment to try to find solutions in tough times and we were all facing crazy times right that's just part of the deal yeah but um uh tell me what you what you again what are some of the things that came out of covid for you guys oh man you're talking about technology you know okay uh, fast forwarding 10 years a bureaucracy of, of everything uh in three in a matter of three months you know okay um so i Greatly appreciate that. I always try to find the, the benefits to a bad situation. Right. How, how can we turn it into a positive? And uh, so, yeah, we definitely started working on, uh, well, we were already kind of working on it, but 
our own uh, software and, and mobile app to uh, facilitate the transportation needs. Um, bringing in our GPS tracking to come up with Google yeah. Maps. So when the driver's driving down the road and there's a traffic up ahead and Google reworks the directions and mm -hmm. the new ETA. Yep. So if your appointment time is going to be missed with that new ETA, that you and I would be notified at the same time as the driver's notified. Okay. So that transparency, uh, just love it, you know. Um, that way the customer knows and the customer's not all mad because where's my stuff? It's We're all on the same page. You can see the same Google Maps I see. Yeah, this is where our driver is when you're afraid to sign to it. Uh, it's just a beautiful thing, especially when when you hear those horror stories of a, of a plant shut down costing a million dollars an hour or something. You yeah, know, waiting on one product. Yeah, and they do, and yeah. they do. I mean, you shut you yeah. shut the factory down, man. It can get it can get crazy in a hurry, and people are you know they won't give as much grace as they can, but you know we can only do what we can do, right? That's right. That's part of the drill. Now, tell me a little bit about. Um, I think you said that recently you guys got uh, acknowledged for something. I don't know if you're at, at, at liberty to talk about this yet, but if you are, I'd love to hear a little bit of the story. Yeah, about I mean, how you guys got got. They didn't say I couldn't. Okay. So, tag. So, guys, out in the world, you guys are hearing it before anybody yeah. else. Yeah. So, uh, Diesel Grid was nominated for uh, Carrier of the Year from C.H. Robinson. Wow. Which is uh, one of the largest uh, 3PLs yeah. in, in, the, in our country and in the world. So, Carrier um, of the Year from C.H. Robinson. Dude, yeah. Pretty awesome. So, we are very honored to have that and blessed to work with everyone there and our team. Uh, to accomplish that, it's, it's been amazing. It's been a lot of hard work too, right? But uh, it's it's nice to see, you know, almost an added boy for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what would you, what would you attribute that success to? Him? What's the what would you say the biggest thing that makes you guys different? I mean, uh, honesty and energy and persistence. I think, okay. you know, we we don't quit. We just we do what we got to do. It is what it is. Things happen. We understand that, but doesn't matter we still got to get to the finish line yeah so we uh we bring whatever it is to their attention and, and keep them aware of it um you know it's crazy to say but i think we've got more customers by being late than we have been being on time because we tell them about it wow and you know in the trucking world you don't get that yeah, yeah. well i mean and, and with the technology you guys have embraced do you see more of that coming to the table i mean is that yeah, I mean, you know, just the transparency is just, it's, it's, you know, the 2020s. I mean, it's just 2021. It's, it's our time in life, right? You know, everything is transparent. Yeah, the technology, the technology will take you so far, but the team that you have here, yeah. I mean, you've assembled some great people and recently had some new ads. You know, you're, I love, I love to see successful businesses continue to grow and, and be focused on learning new skills and and you know trying out different things I, I, my, my, one of my favorite uh, quotes in the world is half is made by walking right right we, we theorize about it all day we talk about what we want to get done but but the reality is is it happens when you go out and try it. you don't know what's going to break right until yeah. you get out there and give a shot and, and and being willing to to try new things and i think that your customers appreciate that in a different way as well that you're willing to, to push the envelope a little bit try to figure out a better way to serve them you know not not try it just because you want to try it try it because you want to serve them yeah yeah and give them the option you know to make sure that they're do you want to be part of this beta test yeah <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> so yeah yeah sometimes sometimes the ones that you expect to step up and say yes i would love to participate you're glad you asked that question right oh definitely <laughs> yeah and sometimes i'm like you know what let's not try that over here let's try it on this little baby right, yeah. project yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll face it the time yeah well out in the um out in the supply chain world the trucking world what if you were able to wave a magic wand fix one thing what would be what would be the biggest challenge that you would that you try to work on first oh man that's funny um you know a, a magic wand what would i fix 
I, I mean, I think that's that's what I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to fix. What we need, what our magic wand needs to be, okay. and the, and that's the uh, you know our, the software we're creating, okay. and to, to facilitate all of this, and uh, to keep everything 100. percent You know, okay. um, and I. And, and I guess my perspective, there's a, there's a lot of stuff out there, I get it, you know. Uh, I've, I've worked and we have a lot of uh, software that we pay for, and at the end of the day, it's, it's not mine. Yeah. And uh, we, I've got to have it, it's, it's just missing some pieces, you know what I mean? And uh, no one else will build those pieces, so we've got to build them. That's right. You need to fill in the gap. You know, I love it. I love it. That's cool, man. That's cool. You know, right now we see that manufacturing is coming back full force, man. I mean, it is. People are really excited about uh, getting back on board. Across the board, everybody that I'm talking to, there's three big buckets that people are worried about. Number one is, you know, the workforce. Hands down, I know, just about every manufacturer that I know has got machines sitting in idle because they can't find people to come in and work. You know, I think some of that's kind of getting tightened up. We're not going to get into the politics political side of it but but thankfully some of that i believe is coming to a head um the other thing is uh business development because a lot of businesses especially in the industrial space they use trade shows right is their prim- one of their primary methods to get their business out the market um and and when that went away and you know we have board manufacturing summit you know we had to right. lie, you guys lined up to be a big participant in that and when that went away man it was Painless, like, stabbed in the heart. Yeah. But um, the reality is, we just couldn't do it in 2020. Now we're not going to do 121, but it looks like maybe 22 we'll be back to to the you know back to the trade show world. I've attended some trade shows recently and have been just blown away with how well attended those are. I mean, I went to design a park the other day in Atlanta, which is a contract manufacturing group, yeah. and dude, they were a mass in sight. Nice. And the halls were full, so I think that the trade show space is coming back. I think by 22 we'll be fully, fully back up on it, yeah. and I'm looking forward to that because I love trade shows. I mean, I'm a trade show junkie, man. I, I, I love going to them. I love right. doing them. You know, all, all the parts. And, and so many businesses. You were talking about that skills, I mean, that gap in training to get drivers back in place. There's a gap in marketing that just went away. I mean, we got a lot of stuff. We got a lot of stuff accomplished with people doing, you know, LinkedIn and, and that kind of thing, and doing Zoom and using different tools. But you can't replace the face-to-face. You can't replace, man. It, it is really difficult to um, replace the, the volume of business that's done through the trade show industry. So hopefully that'll come back. So the the, the three areas: number one, and workforce. Number two, business development. And the third thing that often comes up for manufacturers across the board is supply chain. We can't get our stuff, man. It is like, ah, where's our stuff at? Now, I am really excited to you know, get some folks to understand from a carrier's point of view some of the challenges you face. If you got trucks that are broken down and you're waiting on parts because people are just telling you the parts aren't in. There's nothing you feel about that. You, you mentioned something on pre-show that you, you, you called, you had a, had a truck broken, you called for somebody to tell me, tell me about that. Yeah, I mean, you know, a simple $200 part, you know, yeah. shutting a truck down for a week and, and you finally get it and it's a bad warranty part. Oh. It's broke down again with the same truck. <laughs> you got no, man, come on. And how'd you, get, how'd you get it off the road? <laughs> oh yeah, so we had one that we had, we had to tow it and, and we, we tried calling and Sorry, there's no tow trucks available. Can't do that either. <laughs> hey, we can't fix it. We can't tow. What can we do, guys? You can sit there and wait. <laughs> yeah, the struggle is real, guys. Yeah. So you manufacturers are chopping at the bit saying, where's my truck? <laughs> Understand that sometimes with the trucks break, you can't even get a tow truck to tow the, tow the truck off. The yeah. Road. That's, that's a tough haul, man. Yeah, you know, speaking of shipments, you know, so we may go to a, a, a shipper and, and let's pick up four different shipments, a full truck load. And then only three of them are available. So we're, okay. we're also finding that too, that yeah. even the people that are ordering their stuff don't know it's not ready or there available until we show up and then we are informed that it's not happening. Okay. So, you. you know, then you're getting partial at that point, you know. Yeah, and that, 
that mixes it up because you've already done all your planning and your load planning and all that stuff and drivers and trucks and when that goes away that, that makes so 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 manufacturers need to be as accurate as they can with their carriers to make sure that you're not sending them empty trucks that go yeah back Amazon to is product on site ready to go yeah you know one of the things I'm really excited about is we're coming up at, towards the end of the, this tour one of the one of the groups that was mentioned in the um, in the book was the ports, right? The Georgia Port. We were blessed to be able to have some really great resources at the Georgia Ports. And I, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to going down to Savannah. We're going to go down the 29th for the for the GMA group tour. If you've never toured the Port of Savannah, man, it is fascinating. I mean, they have these big cranes and they're just picking these things up off the boats and sitting them on the trucks. As soon as they get them off the boat, sometimes they're sticking them on trucks and just go, and it is. It is fascinating, and some of them are going through customs and getting, getting the full, like, those big trailers that you see going down the road, x-ray, you know, to make sure that they're past. I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. So we've toured the port a few times in the past. I uh, really enjoyed that, and so we're going to be doing it the 29th. It's the Thursday. Uh, we do have a couple of seats still available, so if you go online to um, Georgia Manufacturing and click on the upcoming events tab, you can see all the events that we've got scheduled out. Um, also on that page, if you go to the book, you'll be able to see um, there's a you know explanation of a little bit about what the book's all about. But also there's a thing for interviews. So all the interviews that we've done on the road, we've archived and we've got a, a copy of all of those interviews there. This interview will be posted in the next day or two on there as well. So you can go back in and, and you know, if you weren't able to catch the whole thing, you'll be able to see it there. So I'm really excited to see. Um, what we got going on with you know with wrapping up this book tour uh, this has been fun we've, we've learned a lot you and i were talking a little bit pre-show about all the all the rig and the gear and the setup to make this thing happen yeah. it has been a journey to figure out these pieces but, it's, but it's been fun we've been able to meet some great folks uh tell some good stories and we got several more to tell so on thursday we're going to Okabashi. on the next tuesday i think we don't have that finalized and then the, the following Thursday we're going to Kia and um, Okabashi is up in Beaver they manufacture shoes they're in the book Kia of course is in the book um, and then we're going to tour Iron Shield Brewing which is I tend to, the, the two tours that tend to get really great uh, attendance is brewery tours and the fourth tour so we're going to kind of wrap, <laughs> wrap the month up for the bag so um, what would you what would you say as, as we're wrapping this you know this this visit up uh, what would you recommend manufacturers to think about or anybody in the transportation you know, I'm going I'm to kind of open it up the floors here. What would you like to share with the community you got out there? Yeah, you know, uh, one of my big things that I always think about is, uh, you know, short-term pain for long-term success. You know, what are we going to be facing here in the next, if, if we are going to be bringing in a lot of manufacturing, I mean, if, if our jobs were only 3 5%, unemployment but you add 10 percent more jobs you're negative there you right. know what i mean so um that does have to be considered and uh it's kind of like how the uh, i love when the government brings in stuff they bring you like uh because I'm, I'm i was from henry county georgia and so they're building all the uh the the warehousing and stuff but they didn't build the roads they wait till after the warehousing right. is done to to update the roads and pre-playing for that you know it's coming yeah don't be surprised by yeah. that <laughs> yeah you know be careful what you ask for yeah right yeah yeah, yeah. But that's cool that's cool we all got to be thinking a little bit further ahead and you know um if i would have been thinking a little bit further ahead i'd have a copy of the book right here in my hand but i wasn't i've got uh, usually i hold it up but go to if you're interested in learning about uh, more about manufacturing and some of the cool stuff that's going on in the space I would encourage you to go to Manufacturing Success in Georgia. And from there, there's a at the top, there's an opportunity for you to learn more. If you want to learn more about the great career opportunities that are in manufacturing in the state of Georgia, man, it's a great way to do that. We'll send you out some information, get you connected to some folks. Um, but uh, you can learn more about the book, learn more about the tours, and also learn more about the career opportunities. Select one that's the best fit for you. Uh, but uh, Go again, it's at Manufacturing Success in Georgia. And if you're interested, you can get there's a place where you can order the book online. 
Uh, we do that through one of our partner affiliate companies, and they'll drop ship the, the book out to you. Uh, and if you're interested in coming on some of the tours we're doing, we're doing some really fun stuff. I mean, we're going to see some great places. Uh, but I know that the brewery tour is going to be an open tour, and then the port tour, we do have a couple slots open for that. So um, go online, register up for the events, make sure that you order your book today if you've not already got one, and make great Christmas presents, if, you know, whatever that, that looks like for you. But, uh, but with that, it has been another great day at GMA. Really appreciate all that you do uh, to help support manufacturing across the board and uh, improve the supply chain. So thanks again to Jeff Hughes for your participation. Thanks for having me. Yep. And we will see you upcoming at upcoming events.